Welcome to another episode of Your Voice Matters. Welcome to another episode of Your Voice Matter. I'm your girl, Viv Cunningham, with Preferred Real Estate Brokers Selling the American Dream here in Central Florida. So happy Easter. So E is risen. I am broadcasting this, not broadcasting it live, but recording it because it's Easter Sunday. And I hope you're off to church and you're enjoying your day and spend some time with your family. But today E is risen. I am here with Miss Beverly. And we're going to be talking about today, the resurrection of Jesus marked the death of the enemy. So I'm going to have Miss Beverly introduce herself to you. And um, we're going to jump right in and we're going to have fun and we're going to get started about um, the resurrection of Jesus and his birth and baptism. So Miss Beverly, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Beverly and I'm a born again Christian and a minister of the gospel. Okay, so as Viv said today, we are going to talk about uh, the what the resurrection, and the topic is the resurrection of Jesus Christ marks the defeat of the enemy. What a powerful topic that is! Yes, what a powerful topic you. that is, Miss Beverly. Yeah. The resurrection of Jesus mark the defeat of the enemy. So, oh, yes. you know, because that's what it's all about. God will defeat the enemy for you. Uh -huh. And we just have to know that. Right, Miss Beverly? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But before we can understand the true meaning of the resurrection, we need to go back to the Old Testament. And you know, the Old Testament prophesied throughout the whole testament, um, prophets prophesy about the birth, life, and death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. How many thousands of years before Jesus actually come to this earth? So let's look at his birth in the New Testament. He was born in Bethlehem in a manger. His bed was a trough where they feed the animals. How lowly can that be? Wow. Can you think of that? You know, and I mean, we born in luxury, we born in hospital, we born where, you know, um, you, you know, in surgery rooms and things like that. And just to think that. God was born in a major, in, he, he was born in a trough because why? There was no room at the end, right? Exactly. And you know, guess what? God ordained that because God could have made it that he should check into a five-star hotel, mm -hmm. but God wanted to teach us something. Yes. That it doesn't really matter where he was born is who he is, he is. just yes. like us it doesn't matter where we come from but where we are going yes you know and so it is with jesus that was a powerful lesson yes that we learned then after his his um, birth then we talk about his life his life in Nazareth, he spent 30 years there. Then he went to John to be baptized. And of course, after he was baptized, the Holy Ghost came down and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Well pleased, yes. Can you imagine when our parents say that to us? Yes. How we feel? Yes. You it's know. like when, 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 when God says, well done, well done, my good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. How, great wow. that, how great that feels. Wow. Then after his baptism, God led him up 
into the wilderness. God did it because he has a plan Mm -hmm. to be tempted by the devil. You know, the devil is rampant. All around us, every day we see it. He cannot do anything without God's permission. You know, so God let him go there to tempt Jesus. And what comes to mind too about temptation of Job, you know? Yes. God allowed the devil to tempt Job, took away everything from him. Everything, everything he took away from him. Children. Everything he took away from him. He stripped him. Stripped him. The only thing he left with is a wife who tells yes. him to go kill himself. Yes. Wow. Ain't that you know? something? But he never gave up faith. Ain't that he something? He never gave up his love for God. Tell him and to go so, kill himself. And so we should never give up our love for Jesus Christ and God. Amen. Only him That's alone so you can trust and you can believe. Only him alone will give you the guidance right. that you need. You need, you know, when other people just like it, Job wife said, go kill himself. Go, go kill yourself. Why don't yes. you just kill yourself, Job? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, have, what are encouragement when you married somebody? Isn't that something when you marry somebody? What are oh, yes. You have to know that is for, you, you for somebody to give you that and say, go kill yourself. Mm-hmm. You see, you have to know who you married. Yes. And most you know, of the time, equally we don't yoked. Know. Yeah, not equally yoked. Yes. Yes. Because they show us a different face. Yeah. And when they got you. Yes. They can say gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. You know, we were talking about about um when when God was talking when God was fasting and he, 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 for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, we remember we were talking, we you know we talked in previous conversation about how how the devil tested him. Mm-hmm. While he was out there in, in the desert, just to think that, you know, how he tests us. And, you know, we as human, um, he tempts us with a lot of things, with a lot of shiny objects and things like that. But you know what? He told us in the Bible that he will never test us, tempt us mm-hmm. beyond what we can handle. Yes. Yes. And, so, and I'm so thankful of that. Yes. After Jesus was fasted in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights, can you imagine how hungry and thirsty? I cannot was? imagine that. I cannot imagine because with me going on, I have to fast to get some blood work done and I got to fast 24 hours. It's almost like I can't do it. It's hard. So can you imagine him 40, 40 days and 40 nights through that wilderness? How tempted he can be? Mm-hmm. You know. And then the devil offer him and tell him to take stones and make bread. You know, it's not that Jesus couldn't do that. But you know what? It wasn't a part of his mission. So he didn't want to do that. And he would not, if he had done that, he wouldn't have pleased God. Mm-hmm. And he's all for his father. Yes, yes. All. He never do anything without his father's consent. And so should we. Yeah. We should never do anything without, when we're growing up, without our parents' consent. Or since we are growing, we should try to find someone who knows more than us, who we can look on for um we could look at for, look guidance. for guidance but but we are so miss beverly we're so unruly that a lot of time we don't know that god give our parents wisdom and he give it to them because they that's why the gray hair that's why the gray hair comes in mm-hmm. you know and because he gave he give them give them the wisdom in order to teach us but a lot of time we're so unruly of how we um of how we listen to our parents, you know. And let's talk a little bit about our parents. Remember, he, we talk about he's talk, he, he talks about um, you know, um, honoring your parents, mm-hmm. honoring your mom and your dad. And and I mean, if if we think about it, living by the Bible, the Bible have an instruction of the way we're supposed to live. And if we ever um when we when we 
Well, we go straight from it. That's when we get ourselves in trouble, you know, because exactly. instruction, he wrote that, he wrote that instruction. And if we live by that, it's just like, um, I, this morning I was studying my Bible and it was, um, John, um, I think it was John 15, four. And he was, he was telling me, you, you know, he said, said, you know, get in the word, learn the word, learn the Bible verses. So then, then you can rely back on it. So when people are trying to tell you this, it's just like, that's why pastors in church, every time they preach a lesson, they always give you a Bible reference, mm -hmm. you know, so you can go check it out for yourself and you don't have to exactly. necessarily take their word for it, you know, and you can check it out for yourself, but you're honoring your parents, you know, it's so important. And then he says, honor your parents that your days may be longer on the earth, you know, but of mm -hmm. course, you know, we're all on roly, right? Miss Beverly. Oh, yes, absolutely. And Jesus's ministry on earth here was no picnic because he's teaching repentance. He's teaching that we can be holy. We'll never be perfect because there's only one man is perfect and it's Jesus Christ. Yes, right. But he wants us to be like him. More like him, yes. Yes. But the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests, they feared him because they think that he was stirring up the people because a lot of people were following him and listening to his teachings because he's teaching them how to live how they can attain everlasting life. But of course, they plotted to kill him. And of course, there was one of his disciples, even when they're having the Last Supper, they were all dipping in that bowl and everyone, Jesus, you know, talk about one of you in here is going to betray me. And every one of them was asking, including the one who was betrayed, who is going to betray him. Is it me, Lord? Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. me? And he said, you know, he, you know, he could have called out the one, but the gentleman that he is, he wouldn't do that. He allow him, the betrayer, to do it himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He did not call him yep, out. Yep. And so when they went to get Sanme to pray, he took his three favorite with him. The others were afar off, but those three were closer. And uh he prayed and prayed to the Lord to take the cup from him. And then when he came back asking, he wanted the disciples to pray with him. They were all fast asleep. Yes. Then he went away and prayed some more. The Bible said he, swe he sweated blood, asking the, his father to take the cup away from him. Yes. But his father said, no, that wasn't part of the plan. The plan was that you should come here on earth to save sinners, show them the way. Yes. Because they did not know the teachings of how to walk in the way. They had only known the teachings of the Jews. And they, they, those Jews and priests know the Bible, but it's the Old Testament. I don't think they understood some parts of it where he, he, the prophets prophesied about the Messiah who was supposed to come to save the earth. But yeah. you know what? Those Pharisees, Sadducees, and the priests all were threatened by him because the people were call, calling him the king of the Jews. 
especially the king at that time. He did not want to hear about another king. But but let let's let's talk a little little bit about um you know Jesus' life it, itself, where um you know they treated him so badly. They treated him so badly, you know, by um, you know, and and of course it, the Bible had to take um it has to, it whatever happened to him had to happen in order for for him to forgive us of our sins, you know, but, you know, he went through so much, you know, but here we are, we're talking about the resurrection of, of when, 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 when they crucified him, you know, they crucified him on the cross and then his, 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 his mom, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, um, that's why, that's why there is um, Easter Sunday, you know, because there is Good Friday and then there is Easter Sunday. You know, the time has to pass where he sits in there and he and 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 he go through whatever it is that God has everything so planned out and everything planned out. Just like when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and you know, and they came back and he was and he was sleeping, came back twice and they were sleeping. And can't you keep your eyes open for just a little bit? Mm -hmm. You know, but just to think that all the things that God um put put Jesus through, you know, for us, for our sin. You know, and he died on the cross for our sin, but yet a lot of us don't know, don't know Jesus. Right. You know, for, for people, I know Miss Beverly, when you walk around and you talk to people, I'm just telling you, there's nobody that can come inside your house that you're not gonna make sure that you're saved. No one, no one enter my doorstep. You know, and and, and, and and the thing is, me and you are always me and you are always saying something is like Miss Beverly, come on now, you know, give the people a break, you know, the people leave the people alone and you know stop on. But when you when you when you get around Miss Beverly, she's gonna make sure she's gonna ask you if you're saved if you know the Lord because you know what you have to know the Lord right exactly and to, to heaven to in order to go to heaven you have to know the you have to exactly. be reborn you again. So to. let's talk a little bit about a little bit about being reborn. Okay, Christ preach about you have to be born again. So all those Pharisees and Jews and all those people there, they were thinking of how you can get back in your mother's womb mm -hmm. to be born again. They misunderstood him and many things that he said they twist it around in order to crucify him because they said he blasphemed against God. Mm -hmm. But he could never tell a lie. He could never blaspheme because he was God in the flesh. And you know, God cannot lie. That's right. That's right. He cannot lie. Because he was, he, he was not designed... He was not designed like that because that's why exactly. he's the only, only one. And then look at how many kings that try to be more like him or try to be like him. Or if not, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to cut off your neck if you don't worship me. But God never did none of that. All he did was walk around and did whatever his father told him to do is preach the gospel, make sure people are baptized, make sure people know of me, make sure people are saved. I came on this earth in order to save you. Mm-hmm. Because you know what, Viv? God sees us here. And God knows that we cannot live by the law. Moses' law. No. We cannot live by that. So then he said, in order for us to be saved, he has to send his son here so that we can be saved. And he made a promise to us a promise of everlasting life think of it you know it's two ways you can make one of two choices thank god that god gave us a choice one of two choices you can accept jesus christ as your personal savior mm -hmm. or you can say no right you go to hell right and those who accept jesus christ are going to live forever in paradise and that's just, that's the, you only have two ways. Either yes. you accept him or you don't accept him. That's just exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. There's no in between. Okay. So either and you that, accept him as your personal savior. And that's what, that's, that's what brings um Easter. That's what brings Easter because you know what? He died and he rose. He died okay? and he rose, you know, just to save us. What just a love. For us. 
Can you think of it? How someone can love you like that? Yes. That they die for you? I you don't know. know if I even would want to die for my child. There you go. Exactly. So, and, and you know, and then just to think that when Jesus was born, he was born by a virgin. And then, and, and just think that he was born to die. Can you he imagine was that just, just like the day you born, you just know that you're going to die and you, and you're not going to live a long life. Okay, there's some people right now that, you know, they're 80, 90, 80 years old. He lived a very short life. And just think that, can you imagine just carrying around the weight of the world just to think that you were born and you're going to die? And we're also going to die. But, you know, they... So we born and we die. We just have to know that. We just have to know. In Matthew 1, 16, it says, And the son of Jacob was Joseph and the husband of Mary who gave birth to Jesus, whose name is Christ. So we just have to know that. But whatever it is that we're going through, we just have to know that that's it. God put us on this earth for a reason. And we just have to know that whatever we're going through, that's it is, it is the voice of the Lord. And he's going to help you through it. He's going to help. He was, he's, we, he will guide you. He will protect you. He will take care of you. But I'm just going to say happy Easter to everyone. And you have an awesome day with your family. May you be blessed. May you give God thanks and praise for everything that you're going through. And I thank you for listening. Viv, the Caribbean team, preferred real estate brokers selling the American dream here in Central Florida. So don't forget, Bridget is having her banquet, not her banquet. Bridget is having her, um, her Easter brunch on Sunday, this Sunday. Bridget is having her Easter brunch. So come on out. You know, if you haven't bought tickets, there might be still some tickets that are there. So come on out and let's, uh, let's celebrate Easter. And remember, it's the birth of Jesus Christ. We have to know that it is the birth of Jesus Christ. I thank you guys for watching. You make it a great day. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episode of Your Voice Matters.